All right. So I see Mark Kendall, Kings for Malis, Randy. I will double check the attendance before we finish. So this is a good example for Kirchhoff rules. This uh, involves a circuit, as you can see, where we have two batteries and three resistors. The only difference to what you can find on textbooks is that I'm drawing the direction of that individual currents. Now, some examples, they do that. In some examples, you're going to find that they give you I1, I2, and I3, or any required currents. But in some examples, the circuit is just as it is in real life. And you have to figure it out. And as you solve the problem, you will figure it out, the value and direction of the currents. As I said at the end of yesterday's class, now the direction of the currents are important. So as we solve this problem, Okay. we are going to be able to figure it out whether or not those directions are correct. Now, let's put this in here. So you have 28 volts and seven volts. So there is clearly more voltage, more potential from this end and from this end. But you have two, what we know as loops, and two junctions. So the first step, whenever you are doing a problem involving Kirchhoff rules, and you will identify, you have to do that due to the complexity of it, um, you have to label the circuit. And the way we label the circuit is by labeling each vertex, all right? So we have A, B, C, D, E, and F. So we label each circuit or each vertex, as you can see there. And then it really doesn't matter but you have to choose a direction for the current.
current loop. So each loop, there are two here, has a net direction for the current. Now for this one, it's maybe easier to tell because I1 and I2 are going like this. So, and you see the voltage here, the potential, the battery, negative and positive. And we know by convention, the current goes from positive to negative, right? That's a convention. So I can say that the loop ABCD has a current loop going in the clockwise direction like that. All right? On the other hand, on this side, we have the battery from negative to positive like that. And we also have the current I2 here going to the left. So it makes it easy, that's why I chose this to start. It makes it easy to figure it out that the current should go this way. So one loop clockwise, the other one counterclockwise, all right? And now we are given already I1, I2, I3 that was given in the problem. Just make sure you complete the path. So for that, that's not a junction. So I1 travels through here. And that's also not a junction. So that's I1 here. I3 and then I2, I2, and then of course I2. So those are the first steps. You wanna label the circuit and you want to uh, choose a direction for the loop like that. I'm gonna show you that it doesn't matter what direction you choose, by the way. Trust me, look at this. Let's start with a junction rule. So, for the junction rule, because there are only two junctions, I wanna use just one of them. And I wanna show you that this one will give you the same set of equations. If you do junction C, you have to look at the current entering the junction and the current leaving the junction. And we know from yesterday that the currents entering are equal to the current leaving. So I1 plus I2 is equal to I3. That's your first equation. Let's suppose you choose this junction. What is the same? I2 is leaving. I1 is leaving, I3 is entering, right? Leaving, leaving, entering. So you will have um, the same. I2 plus I1 equals to I3. So it doesn't matter which junction you use, it will give you the same equation, that. All right? So that's a junction rule. Now we have to do the loop rules. And there are two loops. That's why you label them because now you know which loop I'm going to be referring to. Loop A, B, C, D. So normally we start with a battery and then we go all around the loop. The loop rule states, as I said yesterday, that the sum of potentials or potential drops is equal to zero. So let's see. The, core, the current loop goes like this. In the battery, it goes from negative to positive. That means that the battery voltage is positive. 28. From negative to positive, that's what you expect. However, Let's take a look at the potential drop at four ohms. The current loop goes from left to right. And the current 
is also going from left to right. So they are going on the same direction. Since they are going on the same direction, there is a potential drop. And what's the potential drop? Ohm's law, four times I1. So minus four I1. And then let's take a look at here. The current loop is going down, but the current is also going down. So the same direction, a potential drop, minus two I3, that's equal to C. That's the equation for the loop ABCD. All right? And now let's take a look at loop CDF. So loop CDEF, like that, you have, we start from the battery, all right? Again, from negative to positive, so that's a potential positive there, seven. Now let's take a look at the current. The loop is going from right to left, right? This. The current is also going from right to left. So it's a potential drop of negative one I2. So negative I2. One times I2 is I2. And then here, the loop is gonna keep going down. The current is also going down. So negative two I3. And that's equal to zero. All right, let's suppose those are the equations based on these directions. Let's take a look at this one again. Let's suppose you choose, because you can do this, let's suppose you choose this. You will get the same, but with different signs. But you see that is equal to zero, right? So let's see, start with the battery. If the loop is going from positive to negative, the potential on the battery is not seven, is negative seven. If we look at the current here, if we're going like this now, the loop is going up, but the current is going down. So they are in opposite directions. If the loop direction is opposite to the current, then it's not a potential drop, it's a potential increase. And the same here, the loop will be going to the right, the current is going to the left, opposite direction, but it's equal to zero. If this equation is equal to zero, you can send all these values to the other side and you get this equation. So it doesn't matter which direction you choose. Yeah. Um, so, but it's funny for this ABCD, when um, the voltage is going the same direction as the current, right? Like when the loop is going from negative to positive, yeah. you write it as a um, positive, yes. If the loop is going in an opposite direction from positive to negative, you write it as negative. So the voltages on the batteries depend on the loop. And also if you think about it, the potentials on the resistors. However, on the resistors, we have the additional current direction. So we look at the direction of both, loop and current. If the loop and the current are in opposite directions, they are positive now. If they are on the same directions, they are negative. Because the convention is that you, also, you always have potential drops. A resistor drops, um, the way you can think about it is that whenever current is flowing on a wire or a resistor, there is energy release. That energy is lost. It's friction, if you think about it. That's why it's negative. Think in terms of mechanics, right? If you have a mass going in a rough surface, the friction is dissipation of energy. So you are losing energy. That's the way you can think. All right? So, we go back to what we had before.
Now, the thing is that now that's the, only, that's the physics there. To solve for the currents, you need to do the math. It's a free by free system of equations, right? You have free equations and free variables. Now, the simplicity of this is that you can easily write one in terms of the other two. Be careful with trying to eliminate here because negative two I three, negative two I three, but you have I one and I two here. So the loop equations, let's just simplify them to have only two variables. So we have a two by two. Um, so the I three, let's substitute with I one plus I two. So let's use the substitution first. All right, so we're gonna substitute these two with this. So I wanna do it over there. Uh, make sure that you are writing this down. 28 minus 4i1 minus two parentheses i1 plus i2. is equal to zero. And here, seven minus I two minus two parentheses, I one plus I two equals to zero. So now I'm going to solve the first equation. You have 28 minus four I one minus two I one, minus two I two equals to zero. Then minus four I one minus two I one is minus six I one. I can send that to the other side, minus two I two, I can send it to the other side and I have 28 equals to six I one plus two I two. That's your first equation. And then the one with seven, you have seven minus I two minus two I two minus two I one, sorry. Minus two I two equals to zero. Minus two I one is by itself, so goes to the other side. Minus I two minus two I two is negative three I two goes to the other side. Then you have seven equals to two I one plus three I two. So you have this equation and you have this equation. Now you have a two by two, right? So let's finish it here. Let's write here. 28 equals to 6i1 plus 2i2. And here we have 7 equals to 2i1 plus 3i2. Well, um, we eliminate one of the variables. Let's eliminate I1, right? To eliminate I1, as you can see in the equations there, I can multiply, and Anthony, let's do it here so you can see it bigger. So we have, again, 28 equals to, 6i1 plus 2i2 and 7 equals to 2i1 plus 3i2. I eliminate i1 by multiplying this equation by 3. 3 times 7, 21. 3 times 2, 6i1. 3 times 3, 9i2. So now you have this equation and you have this equation. Let's subtract them. 28, right? These two 
we subtract them. 28 minus 21, seven. Six I one minus six I one, it cancels. Two minus nine, minus seven I two. You know what that means? That means that I two is equal to negative one amperes. So you go back to the figure and as I said, right? There is so much potential here that the current goes like this. So the current I2 goes like that. We leave this as negative because that, that was a solution, right? And now we can use it here. You see that equation there? We can substitute there and find I1. So we have seven equals to two I1 plus three I2. Three times negative one, minus three. Seven plus three, 10 divided by two, I1 equals to five amperes. So I have I1 and I have I2, I2 and I1. And you basically have it. That's positive, so that's the, good, that's the correct direction. What about I3? Well, look, I1 plus I2 is equal to I3. I1 plus I2, I3 equals to four amperes. I3, I1, and I2, that's the solution of the problem. So it becomes a math problem on the last. Wait, field. Professor. So I2 is going is negative one. So would it mean it's going the, op the opposite direction? Yeah. So it's not going. So it's going to positive to negative instead of negative to positive, right? Yeah, and it's doing that because of the 28 volts here. There's four times more battery than seven, of course. So the current goes like this. It pushes the current on that direction. Okay, got it, thank you. Any other questions? You good? So make sure you write down all the steps. I wanna do another problem now, uh, where I'm gonna let you guys at least write the junction rules and the loop rule equations. But it's all about keeping it organized, right? Your loop, your junction rule, your loop rule, and then your algebra, all right? Okay, let's take a look which one I have here. Okay, let's give you a few here. So uh, the circuit I wanna give you now is like this. So all these batteries, the positives and the negative end are now important as you saw in this example. That system value. All right. And the values are two, four, All right, um, and I want to give you some help by giving you the direction of the current here. So, all 
I wonder. I do. I three. So just like we did over there. Find the value and direction. of each card. Right. So during the exam, will you tell us which direction these were? Uh, uh, the normally I do, yes. Uh, however, I will really encourage that you go to Stengage on the weekend because that's where you have the majority of the examples and you will find that in some of them, they don't give you the direction of the cards. So if that's not the case, we'll do an example like that after this, okay? Okay. For well, for the twenty volt one, do we assume it's also moving in I one direction? What was that? Uh, for the twenty volt battery part uh, at the top. Mm -hmm. Do we assume it's also moving with I one, or will it be another current? You have to complete that part of the current, like I okay. did. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's I one. There's no junctions in between. No, no, just separately. Just separately. And in fact, that's negative to positive, but that's why it was uh, you have to. So yeah, it's probably going to be, yeah, okay. yeah, separately. So the, 
what you need to worry if they're giving you a direction of the currents is to find or not to find is to choose a uh, low direction right this is how i choose it I, I i do this negative to positive 30 positive to negative 20. now 30 is larger than 20 so might as well do this right i know it's opposite of 20 but it's it's good you know say will, will, will you subtract 30 by 20 to the fact that yeah, you're going to end up subtracting because of that. And here there's only one battery. So, by that, remember, you can choose any loop direction, right? I'm just choosing those based on the battery values. Let's start with a junction rule before we go into the batteries and the loop. Uh, because the currents are here, I mean, I can do that, but let's use this now. Let's do junction D here. Leaving I2, leaving I1, entering I3. So I1 again plus I2 equals to I3. Right? So there you are. Now let's do that loop. A, B, C, D. Let's see if you want this right. Because this is important. The signs actually are important now. So from negative to positive, you see that loop? So that will be positive 30. Now the loop is going up, the current is going up, so negative 2 I1. But now you're going from positive to negative on 20 there. Minus 20. And then on four, the loop is going down, the current is going down, so minus four. Right? The way I do it is progress. Because you could you combine could. them if you already like if it's easier, but I feel like doing it separately won't confuse the majority. But you can combine it if you want. No, I just mean like they're not two separate equations, right? So we would always think like no, that, that two equations, that two loop equations are the two loops. Okay. If you have something like that, it's two loops equations and one junction. Okay. The way you know this is because you have three variables, so you need three equations. Yes, anybody was asking that? Well, uh, Professor, I have a question. So, uh, so my biggest thing is just determining. So, obviously, you gave in the start um, three, like, so I1 going from D to the left, and then um, I2 going from D to the right, and then also I3 going from C down towards D. But when adding the other one, so I1 going from A uh, up north towards B and then going from B to the right, that being always I1, like how did you determine that's, for example, I1 and then, um, for example, I2 being on from F up? And okay, then... so you're talking about how do the directions of the currents are given? Yeah, kind of. And also, like, like, how do you determine if one's I2 and one's I3 oh, yeah, that, and one's that, I1? The labels are like, you can label this as I2, I3, I1. It doesn't matter. Okay. There are different values, though. The reason you go, this is given. No, not really. I gave you that. Why did I chose that? Based on these buttons. Oh, okay, okay. So the current goes always from. Right. Positive. Positive. Right? Positive. Right? So yeah. I choose this because there is steady balls and also negative positive. Here I chose this direction because negative positive, mm -hmm. which is greater than that. And because these two are leaving, this one cannot leave. One of them has to enter. If these two are leaving, this has to enter. That's why it goes up. Ah, uh, okay, okay. 
So that makes sense now. To the question of how do you choose the, the, the like how the how do you do this in real life? For example, in engineering, right? You are not being, you're not gonna give given any of this. Like you have to pick your own directions and all that. Um, you pick them like I did. I mean, if you get a negative direction, that means the direction we pick was wrong. And what are some factors for it to be wrong? The voltage values. I mean, mm -hmm. it seems it seems like the net voltage here is going to be 10. And here it says, so there's more voltage on this loop than this. That affects the net direction of the currents. But remember, the algebra will give you the values, positive or negative. OK? OK. So that's that. Now let's do loop C. D, E, F. Um, this one here, I start from here. The loop is going from negative to positive. So 30 volts. The loop is going to the left. The same with the current. And this is going down, the same with the current. Those are your two loop equations. And now let's simplify this. 30 minus 20, 10. And then let's try to keep the variables with positive coefficients. So let's send this to the other side. And the same here. All right. Again, you may be tempted to eliminate I3. Oh, wait, I2. But you have I1 and I2. So just like we did before, we have to substitute this in there. So if I substitute in there, I will obtain this. 10 equals to 2i1 plus 4 parentheses, i1 plus i2. And on the bottom, 30 equals to 5 phi 2 plus 4 i1 plus i right now here uh 4 times i1 is 4 i1 plus 2 i1 so we have 10 equals to 6 i1 right and then 4 plus i 4 times i2 plus 4i2. Uh, at the bottom, 5i2, 4i1 plus 4i2, 4i2 plus 5i2, that's 9i2 plus 4i1. Uh, so that's a more interesting system there, right? So you have a 2 by 2 and you have 10, 6 I1, 4 I2, 9 I2, 4 I1 equals 30. So how do we eliminate them? Well, let's, hmm? yeah, yeah, from six and four, right? Yeah, you can multiply the first equation by four, the second equation by six. Yep, so the first equation, Wait, 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 can, can you just multiply the, the first equation by, um, by, uh, by two and the second equation by three? Yeah, you can you also do that. that. Yeah, you can do that. Like that. Huh. Yeah, you do that by two and by three. So that will give you 20, 12 I1 plus eight I2, and this is 90. 27 I2 plus 12 I1, yeah. 
And then what do you do? You subtract the equations. So 20 minus 90 is negative 70. 12 by 1 minus 12 by 1. A minus 27 is negative 19, right? Negative 19 uh, I2. And then we get a ah, positive term because negative drops. And then what's I2? 3.68. 3.68. So makes sense. The direction that we pick where was correct. Uh, now we use that where uh, we need to find I1 and then I3. So we can go back to the original equations. We can go back to the first equation here. So 10 equals to 6I1. Plus what's four times three point sixty eight? Okay, so that's gonna be negative. So, so I one will be what? Negative point seven amperes. Yeah. Point eight, negative point eight. All right, what does this mean? So, yeah, we go back here, and uh, yeah, it goes back. So that's what I was saying. Thirty pushes the current like that, so it goes like this. That makes sense. There you are. So now let's take a look at I3. Um, I3 is I1 negative 0.8 plus 3.68. That's I3. So I3 will be what? 2.8? 2.9. 2 2.9? Yeah. Then what? So it's the right direction. I two, I one, I three. How about that? Any questions? You're good? So I'll do one now. I'm not gonna give any directions for the next one. I want you guys to pick the right direct one. Well, no. Pick any direction that you feel like we did with this, the loop direction and solve for the currents. All right. Uh, so today is officially the last class before the exam. No, this is the last topic before exam one. So tomorrow, I think I uh, will do a little bit of RC circuits and then we can do a review. I'm going to do one more example. I'm going to have time to do at least, if you guys have any questions about assignments, we can go over. All right or I'll probably pick a couple of problems to review for tomorrow's exam, all right? Okay, let's give you one more. Um, normally, I put a question like this on the exam. Yes. Yeah, it's an important, you want to have a whole lab on this um, topic. So it's very good to emphasize this. Uh, in fact, next week is the lab of this Kirchhoff rules. Wait, Professor, so will assignment, uh, assignment six RCU circuit, would that be also be on the exam? No, 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 no. That won't be on the exam. So the okay. exam is up until assignment five. Okay.
So you have three, one, two, and two. Oh, three. Three, one, two, and three. Nine and six. All right. So here is an empty problem, basically more realistic type of circuit. So find all the currents in the circuit. Who is Isa? Again, I don't remember. I think you were here before. Okay. I want to add to the left. Yeah. What about for, like it's kind of easier here, right? Because you can put like one like that. What about nine? Like that as well. And then what about one? To so going up or going down? Going up. Yeah, that one is probably like that one on one because this one is going to the left. That one is also going to the left. So the one on one is high. Yeah. Yeah. So just pick any direction and then if it's negative, you just correct it. Now, if there is more voltage on nine, it will overcome. So probably it's going to go down. Yeah.
Is that what you guys, is that what you did, kind of? Yeah. Remember, all of those directions are not necessarily the correct ones. You may have a negative sum. The importance of these directions is that you have the right signs on the equations. So if you choose these directions, let's see if you got the right equations. All right? Wait, Professor, I, I'm, I'm confused. What should I do with three omen on the right side in the bottom? Which which one? The the bottom from D to F. Yeah. Do do I make that current four? No. Uh, no I four. I do. I do. I do. So I two times three. Yeah. So I do. So that would be no also I. So we would do nine minus two I two minus I three minus three I two. Okay. So we'll. But 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 why do we make that I two though? Why do we make three omen I two? Because it's parallel. Well, not technically parallel. Yeah, in series. Yeah, so in like series. I think about it. Forget about this. Look at this. Yeah. They're in series. So, so if they're in series, we we just make it I two, right? Yeah. This this is not a junction. This is not a junction. So the current flows. Right. I'm it's so right. confused. The current only splits here. But 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 there but there will be less current coming down for I three two three yes. ohm. This one should be less than that because the current I two is split into these two. Yeah. We don't know the values of it, right? So that's where your understanding of circuits come from. Yeah, the split of the current and all that. Yeah. So <laughs> so we. This again. I two and I three are. I mean, these two are in series. So that's why. Um, now the loops, I as I said before, I chose them based on the batteries. They just I can choose them in the direction, doesn't matter. Okay. All right. So let's write that junction rule. Let's do it on C. It's the same as here, but So I2 is entering, is the only one entering, is equal to I1 plus I3, right? Yes. Now let's do that loop. Loop A, B, C, D. So, let's read here. Loop A, B, C, D. Uh, I start with the battery. Can you explain why it's I2 plus I2 plus I1 plus I3? I2 is entering. And the only, the two, both of them, the, the two currents are leaving are I3 and I1. Yeah, so remember, it's good that you make mistakes now than in, on the exam. That's a common mistake, by the way. That, so you have to make sure you label properly which are the ones entering and leaving. Be very careful with the junction rule, okay? So that's one. For the loops, the loop is going from negative to positive on six. So six. Okay, I1, 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 right? So the loop is going to the right, the current is going to the right. There you are. But now look what happens though. The loop is going up, but the current is going down. Plus one I think. Right? That's my loop ABCD. What about loop C, D, E, F? Uh -huh. 
Start with the battery. From negative to positive, nine. The current I2 is going to the left. The same with the loop. The current is going down, but loop is going down. Minus one I3. And then the loop is going to the right. The current is going to the right. There you are. Does that make sense? Professor, for loop A, B, C, D, why is I3 positive? Because you see the loop, you follow the loop, it's uh, counterclockwise. When you go around the loop, the loop is going to go up, right? On I1, on uh, 1 ohm. Yeah. But the current is going down. When the loop is in opposite direction to the current, current going down, loop going, loop going up, then you put as positive. Okay, All right, thank you. All right, that's a good question. So that's the rule. It might happen, so be careful. So that's what we're doing this example. So now you're seeing. Professor, yeah. what if you use um, junction at point D? It's the same. If you use junction D, I3 plus I1 equals to I2. Okay. The same. Okay. All right. Now let, that's the physics. Now let's do the math. Um, let's move this variable to the other side. Free I1 minus I3 equals to six. And this one, negative two I2, Minus three I two plus I three equals to nine. So again, we can't simplify that yet because we have I threes in between. Um, and I want, we have three variables. We need two variables and two equations. So we look at the junction rule. The junction says I two equals to I one plus I three. So now I just have to substitute here though. Look, with this. So five, I two, five parentheses, I one plus I three, plus I three equals to nine. Five, five, one, plus five, five, three, plus I3 plus six I3 equals to nine. And we bring back the other equation, three I1 minus I3 equals to six. This is my system of equations, my two by two. Well, that one is easy. I multiply the, obviously the second equation by six because there's negative and positive there. So let's multiply this by Six. six times three is 18 I one minus six I three equals to 36. And then uh, we add the equations, right? Well, let's quick here. Yeah? Five, five, one plus six I three equals to nine. And then I add these equations. Why? Because this will cancel. 18 plus five is 20. 3 I 1, 36 plus 9 is 45. So what's I 1? I think you add it. Like before you subtracted it, why do you add it? In here, because it has different signs. So if I multiply by 6, 6 plus minus 6. Yeah. Oh. So it's just changing the signs because you want to cancel out. When you do the when you do this in algebra, right? Let's suppose you had positive I3, right? Six times I3 will be plus six I3. You subtract so you cancel one of the variables. Yeah. All right. Uh, so I1 will be approximately 
two is rounding two amperes, right? And then let's use that to find I three, three I one minus I three equals to six. Oh, we can't round it. What's uh, the real value? What's forty five divided by twenty three? One point nine. So one point nine six. Yeah, so this is going to be very low. What's free that's 1.96? 5.1. Okay, yeah. All right, what's I free? Negative point 13. Uh, that's I one, that's I free, and I two. Is I one plus I three one point eighty three amperes. All right, let's take a look at the figure now. So I one was correct, I two was correct, I three, however, goes like that. Well, nine and six. There's only a difference of three volts, so it makes sense. But that's why, look, I free is very tiny. Why? What does it mean in terms of physical circuits? First of all, it's only one ohm. Second of all, the difference between nine and six is only three volts. So there is not, think about in terms of uh, energy. Voltage provides energy to the electrons to move. So nine and six, the difference of three volts, it might not be enough. Right, that's why the values of R are very small. If R was large, 20 ohm, 30 ohms, the currents would be almost negligible. There will be too much resistance. All right, that's why normally in labs, uh, we provide you with uh, ammeters that work in milliamps. All right, all right, so that's the last topic before exam one, which is on Tuesday. Um, we have time to review any questions you may have for tomorrow. I do have a problem there. I want to put here to see how you guys do, but it's time to ask. Do you have any questions about this or tomorrow's exam a quiz? Um, for exam one, um, can we take a look? Assignment four, which question? Assignment four. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that, that question. Okay, so a 20 degree carbon resistor in an electric circuit uh, has a resistance. What is the. Okay, you need to look at the. Uh, I believe they give you a table in the next question. Let's look a look at carbon. Is there carbon there? Yeah, carbon has a temperature coefficient of resistivity. That's the dilation. All right. So, what is the current when the temperature of the carbon raises? So, when you have a change on temperature in a resistor, the resistance will change. Okay. So let's read here. Is the temperature coefficient. So oh, okay. if you go to the book or even in the homework, if you look at the next question, they give you a table, right? So use this equation for question assignment four, question five, right? So assignment. Number four, question five. The initial temperature of a carbon resistor is uh, 20, okay, the same, 20 degrees, and the final is 88. So you have? Mine is 74. 74? Okay, let's use that. 
74 degrees Celsius. Uh, it's a carbon resistor, right? And the uh, voltage, what voltage do they give you? Four point frame. Um, so 170. So the initial resistance is 170 ohms. What we are reading in the ammeter, so what's the current when you raise the temperature to 74 degrees? Well, you have to use this equation first. Final resistance equals to initial resistance one plus alpha delta temperature. All right, that's the equation for dilation, by the way. All right, so the final resistance is what you want to find. The initial is uh, 170. One, now let's take a look at alphas. In the textbook, for carbon, the temperature coefficient of resistivity is minus 0.5 times to a negative frame. Ah, so it's minus 0.5 times 10 to a negative frame. And the change of temperature is 74 minus 20 times 54. So how much you get for R? Uh, 27, one minus 0 0.027. Well, let's see how much. It should be. Should be less. Who decays at the end? 165. 165? Yeah. So you get 165 ohms. So because of a temperature change, the resistance change to that value. It decreases because of the characteristics of the carbon resistor. Now they ask you for the reading of the ammeter, the current. The current is voltage divided by 165. And they want it in milliamps, I believe. Yeah. So what's 4.3 divided by 165? 4.3 No, 26. 26 milliamps. Oh, okay. That's how you do. You guys have different numbers, but that's how you do it. All right. Anybody has any question? Okay. I want to know how will you solve this question here. I want to put it on the whiteboard, but I want to share my screen here. There is a question that I found in that study guide. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Here? No, 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 no. Not that. Okay. Question 11. Uh, let's share it so you can see it. You see that question there? I want to highlight it. Okay, question 11. How will you do that question then? So it says, if an electron is accelerated from rest through a potential of 9.9 .9 kilovolts. So you have an electron with an initial speed of zero meters per second, accelerated due to a potential difference of 9.9 .9 kilovolts. No, I've seen the study line. Uh, but it's similar to, uh, to the one to the last problem of assignment two. Similar, similar idea. What's the final speed of the electron? That's a very easy problem. Huh? How will you do it? It's one step. The only information that you need is the mass of the electron and the charge of the electron, of course. 
magnitude wise. How will you do that question? Hmm. It can be a question in a final, by the way, as well, because it can be put, it can be put as a multiple choice question, right? Uh, two and three, you should be doing assignments two and three for tomorrow's quiz. It's all about Electric potential, electric potential energy, and capacitors. Capacitors. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to do that with the, the exam as well. The second exam will be, um, so yeah, the second exam will be a take home exam. I will probably be, I'll let you guys know it's going to be at sometime in July as well. All right, anybody, how do you solve that question? What do you do? Hmm? You know how to do it? So, if you have a problem where they give you a speeds, acceleration, but they give you the electric potential, not the electric field, you need to use the conservation of energy, all right? So the change on electric potential energy is equal to the change on kinetic energy in this case of the electron. So it's an energy conservation problem. All right. Now, the change on potential energy, what equation is that? You guys, you should have, you guys should have it in your notes. What's the question for delta U or U? Is it QV? Yeah, QV or Q delta V. Mm -hmm. And if the electron starts from rest, what's the kinetic energy at the beginning? Zero. But what's the final kinetic energy? One half mass of the electron, V of the electron squared. And that's how you solve it. All right? So let's substitute the values. Charge of the electron. Uh, voltage 9.9. .9. So this Q delta V or QV, one half mass of the electron. And the uh, speed is square, that's what we're looking for. All right. Um, let's put it here. Oh, let's take that. Two times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 times 9.9. .9 times 10 to the three, all divided by 9.11 times 10 to a negative 31 square root of all that. Okay. You do the math.
Is it 5.9 times 10 to the 7? Yeah. 5.9 times 10 to the 7 meters per second. Make sure you review that, guys. It's a, that's an application. That's something we did. All right. Any questions about this? Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to be on campus at 10 a.m. for review. I'm going to be setting the lab, of course. But I want to be here early to set up the lab. But please, if you have any questions, we have time. And the lab tomorrow, we probably want to finish earlier as well. So you probably can stay. Or if you come at 12, I'm going to be in the lab working with the students. And then you can ask questions. The exam will be at 2 tomorrow. So we, I want to introduce a bit of RC circuits. And if there is any questions, please make sure you bring them. All right. Uh, and then on Monday, that's good. On Monday, we can do a review session then. All right. Monday, we can do a review session for the exam on Tuesday. And then um, you should be ready to go. OK. Any questions before we finish, guys, today? So a quick question for tomorrow's yeah. quiz. Is it everything? Is it from essentially like this? Um, Electric potential energy um, up to um, would it be is it not as past dielectrics? Is it like right before Chirov's rules or like capacitance dielectrics, yeah, and, and capacitors in series and parallel? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Basically, chapter 16. Chapter 16. Including resistors? No. No current, no resistors, nothing of that, guys. I'm okay, I don't okay, ready. Okay. No, no. Okay, that. okay, okay. Okay, that's what I'll be for the exam. So to study, we should do um, like it's going to be based off of uh, the web assigned homework two and three. Yeah. So if you take a look on my screen, and then um, would we use the in class examples to also study? Yeah, I mean, there are some of those, like this one, for example, if you take a this, look at this plotting, it's basically the same, right? That's assignment two, this one. Then in class, I did question four, you remember, and I did question three in class. So you should have those solutions with you. Uh, number one is like what we did in chapter 15, but that's with acceleration and force. And then in assignment free, I did quite a few of those problems as well. If you take a look at assignment free, we did capacitors in series, in parallel, and I did some of the circuits already. All right. And then capacitance problems, take a look at uh, question free. Question free, we did it in class. So I'm hoping that you guys are taking enough notes so you when you do the homework or when you study, you have them there. I've seen before change of potential equals to negative change. Okay, so the reason is because uh, this, let me show you. Um, they are asking sometimes this is negative. Because how did we define electric potential? We define electric potential as the negative work divided by the charge, which is delta U divided by the charge. So technically, it should be negative here, right? But if you don't put negative there, or if it's negative here, it's also negative here. Initial minus final will be minus there, minus here. The minus ends up dropping, all right? That's because of the definition. Why did we say it was negative? Because charge, positive charge, goes from a, po a higher potential to a lower potential. In the case of the electron, it goes the other way around. The electron goes from lower potential to higher potential, from negative to positive. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay, 
so I want to stop the recording here. I want to stay a couple of more minutes. If you guys have any questions, but please make sure you are here on time tomorrow, please. And if you have questions, come. I'm going to be here early. All right. Okay. <laughs>